Hello and a warm welcome to Monday night's Instagram Live. So we've got some very good guests on here this evening. Um, before I actually uh, introduce you to the guests that we've got coming on, apologies that we're starting a bit late. Uh, we had a break in at the office. So I've had to liaise with Kevin and Josh who have been down at the office uh, sorting some stuff off, some stuff up. So it's not been the uh, greatest start to a Monday to say the least. Um, but we've got a very exciting show tonight. We end up at uh, our fourth guest is Liam Conroy, former journeyman boxer, now professional trainer in Luton. So I can't wait to interview Liam, he's always good fun. And before Liam, we have Linus Eudofia, current English middleweight champion, uh, an undefeated fighter from Luton, who's got the world at his feet. Um, before Linus, we've got a former professional boxer, Harry Matthews, interesting story. The Pocklington Rocket from York. Uh, we go back a long way, myself and Harry, so we'll talk more about that uh, when he comes on board. And before uh, we speak to Harry, and at the start, we've got the best MC in the business, in the UK for sure. Uh, this is Craig Stephen uh, from Scotland, who has done many, many, many of the big shows, and really is the, he's done a lot of work um, for Mo working with Michael Buffer um, and he really is the best voice in the country uh, at the moment so we're going to try and find Craig and just talk to Craig great man here he is Let's see if we can get hold of Craig wait for Craig to come on board he's connecting up so we'll be speaking to Craig how are we doing I'm very well how are you no but I'm not, I've never seen you with a beard before Neither has my wife. Well, no, that's not true. I had one when I was 20 for a little while, but nowhere near as long as this. A couple of weeks ago, I just thought, I'm going to stop shaving um, for a little while. And it's going to come off. It's got to come off. Um, it, it wouldn't go with the, the dinner suit, I don't think. Um, <laughs> so it'll be shaving a haircut for me uh, when I can. How are you? No, good, yeah, not too bad at all. No, it's all a bit strange, isn't it, for us all at the moment. Um, are you That's missing weird. it? Are you missing I'm it? missing it big time. But I'm, 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 just, I'm just bobbing along. I'm doing other things. I've, I've taught myself how to spray paint, and I've spray painted the front end of my car. Would you really? Believe? Seriously? I turned my office into a paint shop. I lined it all with paper. <laughs> So, so you know, let's, let's talk about your let's talk about your MCing. I mean, yes. how did you get into MCing in the first place? Um, by accident, my, my my boys are thirty six and thirty four, uh, Jamie and Gareth, and they played ice hockey uh, when they were young. Um, so all the parents helped out, you know, just like junior football. Somebody pulls the nets out. Well, hockey, they need somebody to be the scoreboard operator. It's like the Starship Enterprise. Like any American sport, you know, it, it, it stops and starts. And none of the parents wanted to go near it. And I thought, oh, teach me how to do it and I'll do it. So I worked, I worked in Manchester some weeks. And one midweek, I went to a big game at the arena, Manchester Storm. And the best part of the night for me was, was the announcer. He does official stuff, but he also warmed up the crowd. And I thought, I'm going to do that for the kids. So next to where my, um, my, my I don't know what you call it, my, my timer gadget, there was a plug for a microphone, put a microphone in, and I started announcing the kids. And they loved it. They were nine years old. And somebody's reading out their names as they're warming up. Then they're doing goals and penalties, just like a normal match night announcer would. And it led me to be employed by the Five Flyers. They heard me at a junior game and asked if I would go and, and work for them. Um, oldest hockey club in the UK, along with the Nottingham Panthers. So while I was there, there was a boxing promoter, um, a guy who ran an amateur gym. And he asked me, and that's where it started, just from that chance. Just a little working men's club. Where, where, was, where was the first, who's the first pro show you worked on? First pro show I worked on was for Tommy Gilmer um, in a place called the Volunteer Rooms in Irvine in Ayrshire. I'd been doing it about two years and I, I, I was starting to get really a lot of work. And loads of people would say, oh, I'm going to tell Tommy Gilmer about you. 
But as soon as they leave, they forget, um, and they don't. But I did a guy, a fav not a favour one night, a guy called Chris McAdam, ex-Scottish champion, you might know him. Chris ran a show that absolutely fell apart. And as the announcer, I said, oh, don't worry about it, we'll, we'll, we'll stretch it. So we stretched it out, we got some guys in, interviewed them, we stretched the ring walks. This was just an amateur show. And we got it going right through till half past 11. And Chris said, I'm definitely going to tell Tommy Gilmer about you. And the next day, I got a phone call where I go and see Tommy on Monday. And uh, we had a chat, got a pro license. And uh, Tommy was my first and longest professional promoter. And so you, um, I mean, you've, MC, you've MC'd everywhere. You've MC'd everywhere, haven't you? Around the world. You did, if I remember, you did, was it China you did a year or two ago, wasn't it? And... Um, I was meant to be in China this month, well, not this month, this is May. I was meant to be in China in April. Um, my Chinese promoter won Terbiev's light heavyweight IBF yeah. uh, mandatory against Menlong Fong. Yeah. And um, I was told in December, uh, we're going to put on the world title, we're going to put it on in China in April. And that was my first cancellation. That got cancelled in the middle of January. They knew in the middle of January that this was big. So I should have been there. Um, I've never been to the States. I've never even <laughs> been to the States, not even on holiday. But when the kids were young, we just couldn't afford it. Um, and then the time passed for them to want to go to Disney and stuff. And I should have been going to the States in two weeks with the IBF. So I have done a lot of stuff around the world, been to Scandinavia, been to China, France, um, Milan, uh, but I've never been to America, and I'd love what's, to go. What's been your What has been your best experience? Of, 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 I know you've had some good ones. So, what have you enjoyed the most? You had to have one one night that you could one night, relive again. Yeah. Um, Carl Frampton at the Titanic Showground in 2014. They built a stadium for him. It looked a little bit like the StubHub. Um, stadium in America. It was absolutely freezing cold. It was September, uh, but it didn't rain. But it was electric. It was absolutely electric. I would love to live that again. That was, was a great. Was, year that, was, that was when he was. That was when he was working with Barry, was it? That was when he was working with Barry because I did all Barry stuff. Yeah. Um, that was the second fight against Kiko Martinez. Mm -hmm. um, the first one he did on a Sky Show for the European. And the second one, uh, Martinez was the IBF Super Bantamweight champion. Mm -hmm. And uh, Frampton beat him. Um, he beat him pretty handily. You know, I mean, it was a, it was a hard fight. It was a hard fight. But it, it was, I think the score at the end was in no doubt. However, I was praying on round 11. I'm thinking, don't knock him out. Please don't knock him out. Because as an announcer, you want it to go to the scorecards. Yeah, it's the one time that everybody shuts up and listens to what you've got to say. <laughs> um, during the introductions, you know, if you're watching it on telly, the announcer comes on and somebody goes, "Oh, there's the announcer on! Time to go and get the beers." You know, the fight's about to start. But at the end, if it is a judge's decision, then they're hanging on every word, and it's brilliant. So it did go to the judges. Um, and Frampton was the new IBF Super Bantamweight Champion of the World. That was a great, great night. Fantastic. And, so, and, what, so, and what is there that you want to fulfil before you finish <laughs> being a ring announcer? Oh, nothing. I want to go on as long as I can. Michael Buffer's 74. I'm not yeah. near that. So I want to go on as long as my voice holds out. Um, I've, I've, I've done... Everybody wanted to do a world title. You know, I've done world titles. I, I've, I've been abroad. I'd love to go to America. I would absolutely love to do a gig in the States. To be honest, I think the Americans seem to like the Celts, the Welsh. But I'm a Celt. Um, they seem to like them got ancestors from either Ireland and I think they would just love it. I would happily yeah. go with a kilt on. Um, <laughs> so maybe. 
I would have worn the kilt for the IBF convention. I do the award ceremonies at the IBF convention. I, I started doing it two years ago. Uh, last year we were in China, and this year we were meant to be in Long Beach. So um, I would have definitely taken the kilt to America to do that. Um, you never know, just maybe get a job off the back of it. But that's, that, that's the ambition. The ambition is to go to the States. And do you work outside of uh, being an MC? Um, yes, I, I went self-employed um, to further the ring announcing. I've done it for a lot of years, but work was just holding me back from doing certain things. So I'm an agent in the same trade that I've always been in. I'm in the hardware trade. So okay. I'm an agent for two companies, um, one French-based company and an English-based hardware company. So as an agent, my time is pretty much my own. Um, you know, they're, all they're concerned about is that I fulfill my duties, which you can do nowadays far easier than you could do years ago with, with email, um, etc. I still go and see people, but I don't need to go and see them as much as I used to. So, and I can contact anybody anywhere in the world. I could be in China and still do business with somebody over here. Oh, perfect, isn't it? And do you get do you get on with other MCs? Do, are the MCs one happy family, or is there? Oh no, no, no. We all hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Um, no, there, there seems to be an awful lot of MCs have popped up over the last couple of years. I don't know whether it's social media or not. Um, there's a few guys I know, not many. I mean, there's, there's a guy in Scotland, Greg. Uh, we help each other out now and again. There's a guy in Wales, Ricky Wright. You'll know Ricky. Ricky's yeah, stuck no, off Ricky. you. Uh, Ricky and I are very friendly. Um, uh, Phil Seymour uh, mm -hmm. used to work. Uh, we used to work together with Maloney years ago. We still keep in touch. But outside of that, no, no, not really. Um, no. A lot of guys, maybe, there's a lot of guys just do white collar stuff. There's a yeah. lot of guys work for, what's the, um, what's the big white collar company that everywhere? Um, um, they, they, the, one, the one that got slated on telly the other day. Yes. Like, yes. Them. Yeah, there. Well, of course, I, I don't do anything for these guys because I, I work for the board. I only do yeah. board boxing and I do AIBA boxing. That's yeah. the only two boxing that I do. There's a lot of guys work pretty much exclusively for them. Um, so I never get in, you know, I never... Um, but you're never in the same... The other thing is, as an announcer, you're never in the same place at the same time. No, true. So... No. Not a big happy family because most of us don't really know each other. No, that's we know fair. each other, but we don't really know each other. Um, no, that's fair. I, I enjoy working with Michael. I haven't for a long, long time because things happened at Matchroom and Dazon, and I'm I'm not mm -hmm. doing much with Matchroom now. I'm still yeah. doing bits with them. Um, I've been out to Milan and done some stuff in Dazon, Italy, which is Matchroom Italy. But um, I used to work with Michael quite a lot. And I loved working with Michael. Um, you know, people would say, oh, you know, you're doing the show all night and then you've got to step aside for Michael Buffer. He's a legend. Who cares? I remember having I a conversation with you at the O2 where with... you said to me, you don't mind stepping aside for Michael Buffer, but you would not step mm -hmm. aside for somebody who was not of sufficient quality. And I understood that. I understood that. Yeah. Well, remember the first one of the not the first time we met, but the second time we met. Um, I got usurped for an American That's right. um, at the last minute. Yeah, Joe Martinez. Yeah, I mean, I had Joe. I had dinner with Joe the night before the fight, but I still refused to do TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, well. it was. It, it didn't happen properly, and I thought, well, you know. He ain't any better than me. I'm not any better than him. Why, why, why do it? No, that's fair. But Michael's, Michael's different. Michael's Michael. He's he's a legend. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, Craig, I hope there's many, many, many more years of watching you as an MC on TV. I hope so too. I hope so, Craig. Hope so and um, I thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's been really great Welcome. to catch up with you. Give Give Harry my regards. I've introduced him loads. I know. Yeah, he's a lovely man. So. <laughs> Fantastic, Craig.
Thanks a lot for joining us, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. And that's Craig Stephen, one of the best voices in the business. Um, He's done so many TV shows and world title fights, and in my opinion, he is the best around. Um, So moving on from Craig, we're going to speak to a boxer that... There's a long story with Harry. Um, Craig, you need to switch the off button, okay? And... um, Harry Matthews is somebody that I worked with, God, 10 years ago it is, and uh, he was the first boxer that I ever promoted as the main event on our first ever show, and uh, it was a great experience, it gave me one of my best experiences in boxing, to be honest, and um, we've kept in touch, and I'm really looking forward to speaking with him and finding out what's happening with his life, so let's, put, let's get Harry on. Let's just make sure we got Harry, how are you? How's it going? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, I've noticed you've got a nice suntan there, mate. You've been uh, been getting plenty of sun. I'm good. Can Can you see me? Hello? Hang on a second, hang on a second. I'll tell you what I'll do. That's it. What's up, mate? Let me just go inside. Ugh. Ugh. I came outside in the garage to get a bit of quiet. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Hello. Can you see me? Can you see me? Just let me just check my wife. Wi-Fi's end. Let's uh have you got me? I got you. You got me? Gotcha. You got me yeah. now, mate. How are you doing? You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. good. So congratulations on your baby. Oh, thank you, mate. Yeah, I'm. I'm made up. It's just. It's nice to uh, to finally have a son. Um, feels a little bit surreal, to be honest. Will you let him box? <sighs> Would I let him box? Well, I don't know, mate. If he wants to box, I'll let him box. And if he's going to box, there's only one person that's going to train him. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, he's. You know, his, his mum. His mum's quite athletic. I'm quite athletic. You know, I've always been into sports. So he's, he's he's definitely bound to do something. I mean, already when he trained, changing his nappies and and, and hugging him, so like his, his legs are just so strong. So he's definitely going to be an athlete somewhere. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe maybe a football or something. More money and less uh, less punishment, maybe. <laughs> Do you know, yeah, do you know what? If he became a footballer, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be happy for whatever he wanted to do. As long as he's happy, that's all that matters. No, exactly. No, exactly. So, yeah. so how yeah. is, how's, reti- how's retirement from professional boxing living with you? Do you want the honest answer? Yeah. Uh, in the last couple of months, whilst I've been on lockdown, I've been training quite hard. Um, and I've kind of, I feel like my body has had a chance to kind of recover a little bit. And I've had a chance to think about, you know, how I felt about boxing and things like that. And I've started to really miss it. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 has, it has, like, I think when I was fighting on the road, I was fighting that much all the time that I think my body just needed a rest. And I went traveling and I came back and I wanted to get in the ring straight away. And it was probably a bad idea. And it, it, I should have, I should have taken my time with it when I got back from traveling, not just got in the ring with that Michael McGoldry. And yeah. having, the last time I got in the ring, the last few times, my heart had just, had just gone a little bit. And I think I just needed to say to myself, do you know what? Maybe it ain't about the fact that you need to retire. It's the fact you need to just have a bit of a rest on your body. Because I've never stopped for 10 years, you know what I mean? This is probably the no, longest time I've ever had out. And it's starting to be like when I'm shadow boxing and, and, and I'm on the back, it's, it's like the sharpest I've felt in a long time. And it's the most I've wanted to do it. And it's the most, like in my mind every day, I'm thinking, oh, I can't wait to get back to the gym. I'm going to spar. I'm going to hit someone, you know what I mean? So, but, uh, so you're coming back then? I don't know, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I said, to, I said to myself, I said to myself, I said, I want to achieve 100 fights tonight. And then when I got to like my last couple, I was like, well, this is getting quite tough. I don't know if my body can take it anymore. And then when I've got to have had a rest, you know, I've, I've started. Do 
uh, having my child and, and just, I don't know, just felt I just, like, actually, I only want to get in the ring because I want to get in the ring, not just for the money, do you know what I mean? But with what's happened and things like that, you know, you know, it's been hard on the PT business, that's what I do. Um, yeah. and, and I feel like if boxing is going to come back, then if I feel good and I feel right, then it, it would make sense to maybe just have a couple more years at it and just enjoy them. Well, I mean, the, the thing that's going to be, I think the PT business will suffer, but yeah. I also think there's enough average kids between 12 yeah. stone and 12 stone seven out there that you can go in yeah. there without getting, well, without I'm, any damage. I'm quite lucky. I mean? I'm, I'm quite lucky in a sense because like, I, you know, I, I do a bit of security work as well. And I think obviously security work, it's going to, it's going to go through the roof with the testing centers and, yeah. you know, the yeah. supermarkets. So they're going to need more, they're always going to need security. So I'm quite lucky with that. But I was doing that and personal training and stuff. And, and it was kind of like, because I was doing a lot of PTs and I was doing a, a bit of security as well. Like I was, I, I wasn't really struggling without the boxing. Do you know what I mean? And then now yeah. that my work's kind of dried up for a little bit, I'm still doing a bit of security. Um, but I've had a bit of chance. I've, I've had time out of the gym where I'm not padding people. And I'm just, I'm only ever training myself. And I've, yeah. I've only had myself to think about recently over the, other than a few clients that I, I sort of send home videos to and things like that. And, I don't know, I just I feel like, you know, just I wouldn't mind just getting in there for another four rounder and seeing how I feel. I'll probably yeah, I'd, so. rather than say I'm coming back, I'm probably just gonna think, right, I'm gonna go in the gym and have a few spars and I'm gonna be honest with myself after them spars. If I felt good and I feel it's there again, then I might come back. But if I think, you know what, it's just it's not there, then I'll I'll accept it. That's a good decision. That's a good decision. Yeah. Well, let's go back to good times. Ten years ago, Milton. Keynes. We're going to talk about. We're going to talk about. We're going to talk about March when I when I came in and I bought a box. You know when Graham Earl was meant to be the main event. Yeah. My mum said to me. Do you know what my mum said to me? She said, "I reckon something's going to go wrong, you know, and I reckon you're going to end up being the main event on that show." And I was like, "Ah, it's quite, that's the first show I've ever been on. I'm going to be on Graham Earl's undercard." I was like, "Graham Earl's, you know, he's world class. I'm not going to be in front of him." Anyway, Graham Earl ended up not fighting on the show. And I ended up in the main event, and I, you know, won the fight by stoppage, you know, in the fifth round, and it was it was an amazing night. And you know, I don't know, I wish I could have continued the winning streak from then. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I, I would honestly say, Harry, I think, and I've watched your career the whole way through, right? You know that, and I, I still say that was your best. But I know you might have had wins that mattered more, but that was your best performance, I think, in your whole career. You know what? I was getting hurt in that fight. I was getting hurt in the first few rounds. And then I just, somehow, I just fucking bit down on the gum shell and thought, you know what? You're not beating me. This is my show. And I caught him with this shot that just wobbled him. And from there on, I just built in confidence. And then I just had that round in the fifth, didn't I? Where I just didn't stop throwing mm. punches. And it just, the referee just, just finished it. I think, was it Jeff Hines? Yeah. Yeah, it was Jeff, wasn't it? Yeah, I've, seen him, I've seen him since after that. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's one of them. He's one of them referees. He's... Well, I'm not going to say anything, but he's, you know, he's, he's a strict referee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he doesn't so, take any messing about. So, yeah, so, so apart from apart from that and the, the boxing, obviously you then decided after a period of time that you wanted to make, you wanted to go on the road and earn money that way because... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, mean yeah. it, it was the fact that I didn't have to sell any tickets for that. And, yeah. And it was the fact that I could, all I had to do was train and there was definitely money there. And, and you know, I always wanted to box in the big arenas and things like that. And I thought that was a bit of a fast track to... To be able to yeah. box in the arenas rather than having to, you know, stress myself out putting bums on seats. I just thought, you know what, it's going to be harder fights, but I'm going to get to box on the undercards of like, you know, Anthony Joshua, Dylan White. You know, I've now boxed at the O2 Arena, I boxed at the Manchester Arena, you know, I've boxed in, you know, Cardiff from Oak Point Arena, things like that. And I've had some brilliant memories, um, you know, some not so good memories, but then other memories that have been good. Um, and, and I've, you know, I've, I've made some really, you know, I've made some nice money out of it, but unfortunately, when you stop boxing, you, when you've been used to that money, you have to find other ways to make the money. So, you know, it's it doesn't last forever. Done boxing, you know, it's it's very mm. short lived, and you have to enjoy it while it's there. You know what I mean? So, but some of the young boxers on here who are just starting out, I always say to any young boxer, the hardest part is this ticket selling stuff because that definitely, is definitely that's yeah, good. it's good. It's good. Because when I was winning fights, when I was on in the home corner, right, I was I was turning up and I was beating kids, and they were walking out with like two grand, and I'm walking out with three hundred quid and a win. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, nobody gives a shit really, unless I'm winning titles. Maybe I'll just take my take my chances, fight on the road, because I wanted to make something out of it. Because you know the amount of sacrifices that you give up for boxing, you you know you want to be you want to be you know making sure that you're at least earning enough out of it. So um, 
So yeah, you know, I, I chose that route. I chose that route, and I ended up making more of a name for myself on the road than I did, you know, when I, when I was in the home corner selling tickets. Because no disrespect to any of the home fighters, but the amount of um, times I've had people let me down with tickets and things like that, it, it does become a bit of a mug's game. So you kind of look at them, and you can see that they've struggled to sell all these tickets, and they've got to win. And, you know that you know if they don't win, that's it. That's their career over. If I get beat on points and I give a good account of myself, I know that they're gonna they're gonna respect me on the next show. So I have, it's a win win for me. I'm getting paid, and if I give a good account of myself, um, and I just do what I need to do, I'm on to the next job and I'm on to the next payday. It was a buzz for a while. Do you know what I mean? I think there's going to be a lot more boxers, Harry, at the end of this lockdown period that are going to make one is on the road. <laughs> Yeah, I think there are. I think they're going to turn around and go. Ticket selling is going to be even harder now because of the economic situation, yeah. and I think we're going to go. I think you're going to get an influx of boxers making the well, switch. You know what? I know. I, I, I listened to something you said the other day, and you said that they're going to struggle to, to import foreign fighters now, you know, for the big shows uh, and yeah. the matchroom shows and things like that. They're probably going to use people, you know, the likes of myself who are more of a local. Um, yes. And you know, it might be the chance that you're getting matched in these hard fights, but you're getting paid really well for these fights. And it, it could be it could be a good you know little you know business earner for a lot of people like myself. Especially, I'm not one of these journeymen that doesn't train and doesn't prepare for a fight. I'm always prepared and I'm always training. I don't get you know you get these people. I mean, I don't want to mention any names, but you know you've got your you know your journeymen that fight every week, and they tell you like they are they doing the training or anything like that. They just turn up and fight and they survive. And you know like the likes of Poochie, things like that. He just gets through it and he looks he looks good when he does it as well. You know. Uh, yeah. Listen, Harry. Well, listen. Yeah. I wish you well in every, whatever you choose to do. If you come, if you do make a comeback, that would be great because I think you've still got plenty to give, especially if you're motivated. Yeah. So I wish you all the very That's best. It, and, thank know, you. and thanks a lot for joining yeah. us, Harry. So really good to talk to no. you again. Oh, as well, uh, Craig Stevens. Good to good to good to uh, listen to you, mate. And I hope you're well. And I'll probably see you again. See you Cheers, Harry. Thanks a lot. So that's Harry Matthews, who has given, been a brilliant service to the sport of boxing over many, many years, both an amateur England international and a professional. Um, and now... ...middleweight champion. We can get a hold of Linus. Here we go, let's try and find Linus. I had him, then somebody else joined. Let's find Linus again. Bear me a second, I'm just trying to find Linus, and it's more people are joining, I'm losing him. Go. Let's catch up with Linus, one of the most talented middleweights in the country. Let's wait for Linus to come on board. Linus, what's happening <laughs> with the hairstyle? How's it going, Steve? I'm good, my friend. I'm good. How you, I can't, how I you can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you, mate. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah I can hear you now. Yeah. How's it going? You know, good. How are you bearing up? Yeah, not too bad. All good, man. I can't complain. I can't complain at all. Lockdown's been uh, fun, to be fair. What have you... Well, How about so, you? Have you been, yeah, it's, well, I've been sort of isolated a bit, but it's okay. It gives yeah. you time to reflect, doesn't it? And Because I think exactly that. it's such a pace, and, and we can all yeah. go back and really assess things a lot better. Yeah, you know, you say that. Um, like, you say that. I've been, like, you know what I mean? I, I remember I was asking, like, maybe from... December, like after my last fight, I just kind of said, I kept on saying to everyone around me, like, I need time. I, need, I want, I really want some time to myself. I really want some time to myself. And, you know, for, thankfully for COVID-19, I've got it. So, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's been quite nice to reflect and do some different things. And it gives you time to do a lot of things you never maybe had time to do. And to actually, as a professional athlete, to just rest. Do you know what I mean? That's so just I, what I, I have found. I, think, the best. I don't actually think, I don't actually think that, it's going to be a man. I, I mean, there may be a chance we don't box till next year. That's very possible. But yeah, I, don't yeah. so. I don't think it's a negative impact to give your body the chance 
to have a bit of freshen up before you go again into what I, because from now on, Linus, you're not going to have easy fights. They're going to be hard. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore, yeah. I think, and I think it's not going to be a bad thing in hindsight. You've had this time to actually recover. It's like having an injury. Every boxer's got an injury at the moment. But I, yeah. I don't, I don't, it's, not the end of, it's not the end of the world. It's bad for what's happening in life. But as a boxing career, well, it's not, you know, some boxers are pulling, I need to fight, I need to fight. It's what it is, isn't it? It's what it is. Mm. Yeah, you know, like, you know, my last fight was meant to be about five days before everything got locked down. So it, it was yeah. a bit disappointing, but it, I'm just thankful I'm only 26. You know what I mean? And, you know, I've, I'm, I'm already I'm already a champion already. So it's not I'm in I'm in a really bad position. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm in a volu- or in a mandatory position where the person still has to pick their voluntary and then I could be waiting another... After this is all done, I could be waiting another 12 months to be fine. So I'm in a very good position. I can't, I can't really complain. You know what I mean? It's all good. I've got time to really do some things. I've got time to study. I've got time to even learn a new language if I want to. I'm still training. You know what I mean? I'm still training mm-hmm. quite quite actively and quite effectively as well. The only thing I'm not doing is sparring or seeing anyone else. I'm still, I've still got the facilities. I've still got a gym. I've still got loads of things that I'm doing. So, you know, I have no excuse for when this is done to be in any, you know, yeah. unorthodox shape. So going back on your career, how do you feel it has gone so far? What's been the, the good bits? What would you say have been the not so good bits? Um, the good bits, obviously, I think, you know, I think my, most of my career, I think, I think 70% of my career has been really good. Do you know what I mean? It's been really good. I've had, you know, best trainer I've ever had in my life you know what I mean I've only ever had like two or three do you know what I mean and you know I've had I've got the right trainer I've got the right gym I've got the right people around me I've got everything you know what I mean the right management as well do you know what I mean like, again I think you're you guys are someone that doesn't get enough credit to be honest because we said ages ago you know when I first walked into your office and we were like what do you want to do and I went I want to see as far as I can go and you said look we'll do a three-year plan We'll do this, see where you get to. You gave me every fight I asked for in retrospect. You gave me every fight that you thought was good for me at the time and everything you've done has worked out to exactly what you needed. We got the right amount of fights, the four rounders, the six rounders, the eight rounders, the ten rounders. We got the title fights. We won them and we are now English champion. The downside was obviously the whole Southern area fiasco. That That is something I don't, I'm not, I don't really care about. It's happened, you know, I'm not, touch wood, I'm not really, I've never really got injured, so it's not like, oh, I've ever had something like that, I've never really got injured. Um, the Southern Area fiasco was a bit, it was a bit of a downside because, naively, I always thought nothing could go wrong. When it's all set and ready to go, nothing could go wrong. So, my fault, I always thought, you know, yeah, it's all set, Taylor Jones is there. You know, this is happening with Southern Air title, York Hall, these terms, we're going to, you know, this is going to happen. So I have no doubt in my mind that it's not. And then all of a sudden it doesn't happen. And then it, it kind of hits you and you're like, oh my God, like, what, you know, what you do? And you, and you are different. It hurts. You know what I mean? You, you feel it. My coach told me as well, the week I came back in after it was cancelled, he was like, you know, you, you, what's going on? You need to take some more time out because... This is clearly affecting you a lot more than you think. And then the second time it happened, you, you know, I mean, you, I started to learn and I was thinking, OK, this stuff, this is part and parcel. It's not the first pullout I'm, I'm, I'm going to have. And it's, it's not it's definitely not the last. So it's just learning along that. And that was probably the, the only bad thing that really happened. But everything else in my boxing career has been great. You know, I mean, I got I was just talking to one of my friends, uh, Boxing Luton, uh, about an hour ago. And we were just talking about how everything's gone. And I said, like, you know, I've got just the best things around me right now for my career. The only reason the only reason I can't get to the top will be because of myself. No, I agree. I'm, I think you're going to get to the top. There's, there's no doubt about that. But I mean, that for people that don't know, you were going to fight for the Southern Area. You were due to fight somebody you were mandated and they just kept pulling out and finding reasons not to fight you. It doesn't matter who it was now. And it, and it caused really a six-month delay in your career for, for no reason why you were waiting for people who were never really going to fight you. And that, that was yeah. what the frustration was. So that, that's it. It doesn't matter who it was, but that's what happened. Um, but now, yeah. but then you obviously got your chance and you had an absolute humdinger with Tyler Denny, didn't you, to win the title? Yeah, so yeah. Tired. Yeah, yeah, you know, an- another one, another one, like, you know, that, you know, I've, you know I respect Denny so much because, you know, I mean, a lot of people, you know, you know, you know how, you know, how, how deep it was. There was so many things. There was so, it was so hard to actually find opponents and things like that. And, you know, obviously, Tyler Denny came down. He put a great account of himself and, you know, by the final bell, I thought I'd won it. But if it went the other way or was a draw, I would have been like, OK, I can't really argue too much. But I, I thought I'd won it as well. Oh, you won, and, you won. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, it was just like that was it was one of those things where 
you know, we'd worked for years to get ourselves to a title and then that cherry was just on that cake. You know what I mean? It was just perfect. Everything just worked out perfectly. You and the emotion, I mean? was... the emotion at the end of the fight I saw you was, was just amazing. The, the emotion spilled out from you, didn't it? It was just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's hard. You know, when you win Berg, when you, like for me, winning the title was great, but it was doing it with everybody that had been on the journey with me. Like you were in the ring, my coaches were in the ring, Ellis, Brad, all everyone that had been there from right at the start were there with me. And, you know, I mean, obviously my supporters as well. And, you know, seeing all the very regular faces from my parents and it was just, that that was just, do you know what I mean? It was just so, the one of those moments where you get, I don't know, I just, it just was one of the best days of my life. Do you know what I mean? And I think, and I think there's many more to come for sure. I mean, the, yeah. the thing that we don't, the thing that we don't know is when they're going to be. I think, I think a lot of boxers, what's, what a lot of boxers have to be careful of during this lull period, and, this is, and it may even be you that happens to as well, is we're in this great position and they're going to get a short notice of opportunity to fight on a behind closed doors show with, with short notice where they may be offered a load of money, but they're never going to be, the, it's never going to be the right fight or the right money or the right time. And some boxers are going to think, I want to fight, I'm going to take it. And I think we're yeah. going to see, my prediction is, we're going to see a lot of careers undone, ruined over the next six months. That's my opinion. Yeah. And I think we're going to be able to say, look at these guys that screwed up with bad decisions. And I think that's going to happen because when they're, they're aiming to do behind closed doors pretty much every week in July, my understanding is, and they're going to need UK opponents and they're going to yeah. have to try yeah. and make competitive fights. So they're going to have to find, because the TV is not going to want to fight see a prospect fighting a journeyman, a prospect fighting a journeyman. That's not going to wash on a Saturday night. Yeah, they're, 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 going to, they're going to want some 50-50s. They're going to want some big fights in there. But they're going to want to find unprepared opponents who are desperate for money in the current climate. So I know what's coming. I know, you know exactly what's going to come. And, um, but we just what I say to most boxers is the plan doesn't change. It's just been delayed. And don't yeah, be, don't exactly. Do exactly. Way, don't do the wrong exactly. thing. Exactly, exactly. hundred percent. The plan hasn't changed. I'm still, you know, what I mean, when 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 all this comes back, you know, what I mean, I'm still defending my title. Everything just resumes the same it was. So why should I take an eye off it now and just do nothing and and wait and I have to come back to a whole building process again? I, I'm just going to stay ready. And when it all comes back, we're back. You know what I mean? And yeah, you know how it goes. Any offers. Do you know what I mean? That's what that's what your management's there for. You know what I mean? If, if you if a boxer's going to go, oh, I'm just going to jump at this and, you know, get back out and fight and make money, that, that's your fault. You're the one ruining your career. You've got a management there for a reason and there to advise you. And that's always the point of call. You do the fighting, your trainer does the training and the manager, manager does the management. Do you know what I mean? And that, that's, just, that's just where I am. Linus, thanks. It's been great speaking with you again. Thank you so much yeah. for doing this, fellow. So thanks a lot for yeah, joining us. We'll catch up yeah, always, is, and, always and good to see you, man. I hope everyone's well with you. Yeah, I hope everyone's I hope everyone's well at home. Um, and yeah. just you know, I mean, a massive shout out to everyone that's been on and uh, Liam Liam uh, Convoy coming on. He's uh, he's got a lot of knowledge up here. So everyone, listen up. For sure, for sure. All right, take it easy. See you you later. Take care. Look after yourself, Linus. All right, bye now. Take care. And that's one of the biggest, the best prospects in British boxing, Linus. Don't care. So much more to come. So much more to come from Linus in his career, and we've just had the start with his English title victory. So now from Linus Udofia, one of Luton's stars, to another one of Luton's stars, but he's a star in the training field, and uh, he's a man of fighters, and he's, and he's a friend of mine, and that's Liam Conroy. So let's now touch both Liam, see if we can get, get through to him. See if we can find Liam on here. If I can't find you, Liam, send me a request through. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. I got you. Let's wait for Liam to come on board. Multi-talented man. Here we are. How are you, my friend? How you doing, boss man? You all right? I'm good. How are you, mate? I'm all right. Your face is all blurry on my phone. I don't know if it's a better look or a worse look. I think it's a better look. It's a better look. <laughs> you look. You look clear to me. Yeah. <laughs> So how's things, how's things going for you in lockdown? Yeah, not too bad. Getting bored now, but I had a phone call today. I possibly can go back to work on Monday. 
uh, with oh, a lot of strict yeah. rules. A lot of strict rules, but hopefully we'll be back on Monday. So we'll see good confirmation tomorrow. Yeah, so. I mean, I think, I think we've... I, listen, when we go back to work, it's, we've just got to... Whoever goes back has just got to be sensible and be safe because it's, it's still... Yeah, we've, got, we've got strict rules and they've said anyone that doesn't abide by their rules, like solo people in the vans and just keeping the distances, they'll just be asked to leave site and they'll never be allowed back. That's how they've worded it. Good. Well, that's so, what you want to do because we've got... We've, yeah. got, we've got to protect not only ourselves, our loved ones, our family, friends, and everything like that. And so, everyone else as well. So, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, so how's um? So, what's better, coaching or fighting? I enjoyed the fighting, but obviously, as you know, I didn't. I let myself down. I think towards towards the end of it all. So, that's that's my own fault. That's why I'm so strict on my boys now about their weight and being prepared and all that sort of thing. Because I know what a lazy twat I was. So. <laughs> You know, you can't Connor, you can't Connor, Connor, can you? Yeah, no, exactly. I enjoyed the fight, don't get me wrong, and I shortened my career, like, myself, by being an idiot, but um, I, I really enjoy my training. I mean, as you know, I, I take kids up from six years old right through to, 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 to men, to the pros, so, I mean, I've got a good variety in my gym, and I like seeing them progressing, and not just in the boxing, but some of ours just come there just to better their cells and just, just feel better about their cells, you know? So you, so, do, you do you do a hell of a lot for the Luton Dunstable community, don't you? And your gym's great setup, and hopefully they're all going to get behind the local community and councils, and everything will get behind you. Sorry, because yeah. it's all off there. Um, in terms of what do you want? I know we need to, you're going to bring the kids off the streets, but in the professional boxing world, what does Liam Conroy, the man, want next? What do you want to achieve? I just want to keep growing our gym. The problem we have where we are in Dunstable, there's not, it's a long way from everywhere, do you know what I mean? So we don't get that much coming towards us. I'd like to get some, some good prospects. And I love my journeyman, as you know. So I had four of them up until recently, until George retired. Now I've got Callum Idley, Devine, and Ian Morelli just waiting in the, in, in, in the past to go have his debut. He's been messed around a lot. But obviously, like, I'd like to get a bigger stable for us in the, in the programme. And eventually, I suppose, get my manager's licence, do you know what I mean? But... At the minute, for me, it works better working under you because we've known each other for years since before boxing. So, just to build mm. our stable and get some, get some talent coming through. We've got some good young kids in our gym. So, hopefully, we'll bring them through ourselves, you know, rather than nicking someone else that someone else has trained up and, and then passes on to me sort of thing. Yeah. So, 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 in terms of... You do amateurs as well down there, don't you? Yeah, we do everything, yeah. Amateurs, we've got amateurs set up. Um, White collar setup, not that UWCV shit we all saw on TV the other day, and then um, and then a pro setup as well. So we do everything and keep fit us. And what was your? Did you watch the Panorama program? Was yeah, it, I watched it. it. It was a I, program. Yeah, I, on ITV. Yeah, I've seen it first hand. I, I was based in a gym in Luton a few years ago, and I've seen it, and it was exactly like that. You know what I mean, what I used to it? run my session. Yeah, I used to run my session separate to them. But then a few of theirs saw my sessions and started training with me, and they've actually stayed with me right up until today. But um, yeah, it, it was a lot like that. Don't get me wrong; the guy running it was a bit more um, knowledgeable than that. But it just seemed like it was hit and miss with the sessions. Do you know what I mean? And some matchups on one of their shows, they put them on just so they could have an early night. Do you know what I mean? So um, there's not a lot of supervision from UWCB like they reckon they have. It's just, it, the fighters they have an open night, they go there, and then whoever gym it's at. They just train them right the way through. No one else ever comes near them, really, till 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 the weigh in. They call it the week before. But it's not safe, is it? No, but it's the way people have got to really understand. Like you said the other day on on your um, on your cast, it, it's it, that's ultra white collar. That's not all white collar boxing or unlicensed boxing as I know it. That there's yeah. different levels. Like you say, you've got the IBA. Uh, we we've got boys fighting the I box. You've got um, Grant and Craig Morrissey from Luton. Uh, Dunst, they do one as well. Raw breed. They're good levels, you know. They're set up properly. They don't yeah. run them unless they've got doctors there. They don't run them unless they've got paramedics there. It's a different setup completely, you know. And you're not training for three weeks. I would never let anybody fight for three weeks. I've turned people away and refused the money, and they still have got ultra white collar coming up. So, yeah, I'm all for that. I'm all for that to be banned, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll listen, unlicensed boxing, I have no problem with. I have no yeah. problem with that. But, yeah, I think it's it serves a really good purpose that from kids coming from amateur before they go pro or. You know, getting some experience, but this this ultra white collar should not be allowed. It's it's really dangerous. Some lads, don't suit some lads don't suit amateur, Steve. So if they go to yeah. the decent level white collar slash unlicensed shows, the proper ones, they're as close. Some of them boys and they're as, are, are as good as a pro. They just that have, they either they can't do the tickets or they haven't got that quite a bit of commitment or backing. 
So it's a good platform for some of them, you know? How do you, feel, somehow, how do you, how do you feel about the board current stance so they're not turning over somebody without an, without an amateur fire? Well, I heard that, but then I spoke to a couple of board guys because I had a couple of boys in the gym, and they were saying, as long as you've got video footage, recent video footage and good footage of them, have they changed that again now then? Yeah, I and think that's turn, wrong. Because they're now, some, they're now turning... I, I had a very good white collar kid, really good. And yeah. they wouldn't pass him. They just wouldn't have him. And he's, he's got to go now and do some amateurs first. But you've got to remember, there's been some really good amateur left, real top amateurs who have turned over pro and never really took to it and done nothing. Do you know what I mean? Not nothing major anyway, you know? And look at look at Lee Purdy. Look at Lee Purdy. Look at uh, Neil Blackwell from Unlicensed. Tom, yeah, they come from Unlicensed, yeah. You're someone like Tom Stalker now. He never really done nothing major as a pro and he was the, everything in the amateurs. Do you know what I mean? It just, it's, it's just a different game. Yeah. I understand the board have got, I understood, I understand the board have got a problem, but I, I quite liked it before when they worked on the footage, but they seem to have toughened up on that now, which is a shame. Um, the, footage like, and the, trials, the footage and the trials part is ideal, and I get that. I get that they're saying about the insurance side of things and stuff like that. But I mean, I, uh, listen, I'm not slagging off the board for it because obviously I've had lads pass through on on that. But it's that assessment that they do. Anybody can look good hitting a pad and shadow boxing and hitting a bag until they get punched in the face under pressure. You don't I think that's why that, and that's why they're scared of turning people over now. I think they've gone more cautious. That's why yeah. I think they're going down this amateur. We may change again, but that's that's where we sit at the moment. So you, so yeah. so your gym, so it does look as if gyms are going to be a while before they reopen again, doesn't it? From what I can't think gyms, gyms and pubs and all them sort of things will be the last things to open, which. Makes me wonder why we're getting people say they're going to run shows behind closed doors and shows are going to happen. You cannot legally train a boxer in your gym at the minute. You can't legally do it because you're the social distancing and, and you're supposed to be closed and you get fined for it heavily. So how are you going to prepare a fighter for a show without breaking the law, so to speak? You know what I mean? Well, you're not, we're all, all a fighter is going to enter the ring not in the correct physical condition. Well, under the current, that, current legislation, they can't spar. So how are they going to do that? It should and be sparring all paddles. I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't, this July thing, no gyms opening, doesn't make any sense. It makes no common unless, sense, does it? Unless people are training their boys behind closed doors, which if they are, they are, that's up to them. But that, that gym, whoever owns that gym, is risking a big fine and getting in a lot of trouble for it. Especially if someone gets ill off, off the back of their gym. So yeah. don't get me wrong. You know me, I'm a very small gym. We're, we're non for profit. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to struggle. I mean, I've had to battle with the council for the last five weeks to get my um, to get the government grant, which hopefully they're saying I should have by the end of the week. So okay. that'll hopefully keep me going, you know, my, I have to pay full rent on my gym, you know? Yeah, no, well, let's hope it does. Liam, it's been brilliant yeah. talking to you, my friend. I'm Thank sure you, we've, mate. Got, we've, got, we've got many year, many good years ahead of us and some good fun ahead. So hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. You, stay, listen, you stay safe and Tanya and everybody else and I'll catch up with you shortly. Tell you and the family. Take care, man. Take Speak to you soon. Friend. See you soon. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot for watching tonight, guys. We'll be back on Wednesday, 7 o'clock in the evening with a load of new guests. So make sure you come back and tune in at 7 o'clock on Wednesday and tomorrow we'll have a list of the guests. It's going to be an exciting show Wednesday. So make sure you tune in. Bye for now.